Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Syngenta Canada. Bernard Tobin here on the Soybean School. I'm catching up with Albert Tenuto, MAFRA's plant pathologist here in Rodney, Ontario. Albert, how's it going? Oh, I'm great. I'm standing out of my field here, buddy. Yeah, well, you've got, you're surrounded by disease and pathogens. I know you're all at your happy place. Hey, we've got some sudden death syndrome here. You know, tell us what we're seeing and the impact. Yeah, this field is very typical of what we would see with a well-established field that has both soybean cyst nematode as well as sudden death syndrome. And so one of the key factors there is, is trying to combine an integrated management program for sudden death syndrome as well as soybean cyst nematode as well. And one of the key things we get a lot, asked a lot about is seed treatments. What do we have available? Do they pay? Do they show? What's the bottom line on that? And we've done a lot of work with our colleagues in the United States, our Crop Protection Network people as well, and we've seen definite advantage to having just a fungicide base, which is what we're seeing here with these four rows. You can see the early symptoms of sudden death syndrome, not early, but it's starting to take these soybeans down. So you're seeing that typical venal, intervenal chlorosis that, um, that eventually starts curling. The petioles uh, remain, the leaves start falling down. These beans are gonna become defoliated rather quickly. Now, Albert, you got a fungicide treatment down the middle. You got SDS products on the left and the right here of those four rows. What are we looking at there? Yeah, so as, you, as we said earlier, where we just got the fungicide, the broad spectrum fungicide, which is a necessity for soybeans in Ontario, you can see we need added protection against sun death syndrome. And we're seeing that uniqueness here that there are pathogens such as SDS, SCN that aren't covered by our full package. Four rows to our right, four rows to our left, as you mentioned, are our typical sun death syndrome products available. You can see that they're holding on longer, so we're not seeing those typical SDS symptoms there. The longer we can keep them, the longer we can fill that, fill that seed, the greater yield we'll see out of that. What type of yield impact can those products make? Yeah, and so it's important that the, the products themselves can provide us, you know, anywhere from, you know, very little, maybe a couple bushels up to five, seven, eight bushels um, advantage, but it really helps us when we target that and tie that in with that integrated management program with more tolerant varieties, both for soybean cyst nematode and SDS. So let's talk genetics, obviously a big part of this equation, Albert. Um, you do a lot of SDS testing here um, in Ontario. You know, what are you looking for when you're testing varieties for SDS and SCN here in Ontario? Yeah, so one of the key ones, you mentioned that word Ontario. That's one of the most important things. And we see that quite a bit. You know, the companies do a great job in terms of the ratings for, for their diseases, insects, etc. But at the same time, it's where that real estate, right? Location, location, location is really critically important. And so we do see sometimes varieties that are rated highly or poorly, particularly those highly rated ones that are tested, say, in the Midwest, somewhere else. When we bring them into Ontario, we don't see the, quite the same level of performance. And a lot of that is, again, local environments can have an impact. So it's critically important to test those in Ontario. And we, we test on average, you know, 100 or 150, or we provide a location for many of the seed companies to come and evaluate, really support their internal um, ratings and just supplement that information. And again, you'll see all that information in those seed guides. And the final point, I mean, you always talk about, hey, the importance of, you know, genetics is great, but scouting is so important as well. Yeah, so whenever it comes down to this, you can see this field has had a long history of SDS and soybean cyst nematodes. You can see uniform pressure in here, but the most important thing when it comes to many of these diseases, especially SDS and soybean cyst nematode, is catch them as early as possible. Southwestern Ontario, we've got a good buildup. Other areas, say east of Toronto, eastern Ontario, we're starting to see those hot spots. But please, the best thing you can do, regardless of what we're disease we're talking about, is get there and find out, A, if you've got it. So take a soil test. You can determine it for soybean cyst nematode. 
Get out there now and evaluate your fields. Look for white mold, look for sun death syndrome out there. That'll tell you, A, if you've got it, but also the presence and severity. Is it in pockets? Are you seeing it expanding? Is it across the field? All of those things are critically important to help you manage these diseases in the future. Great insights, Albert. Always a pleasure to have you on the Soybean School. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it.